dragging you down. Grabbed you by the hair and pulled you to the ground. If you want to get up, you need a little revive. If you want to get up, you need a little revive. Hey guys, what's up? I have a pretty comprehensive strategy guide for transit mode. This is for high rounds. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about the Easter egg or anything like that. This is solely to get to a high round in transit mode. So if that's what you're here to do, this video is going to help you. Anyway, build your uh, turbine. Most of you know how to do that already. So build that up and grab one. I recommend buying this door as well as Quick, quick Revive. Check in here to see if there's anything you need. And by anything I need, you need, I mean the little ladder piece to get up to the Galva Knuckles. Now, you'll know you'll see what that looks like later. But anyway, grab your turbine and run to the town. On, I, I recommend doing it on round two. Uh, round one, you're not going to have enough points by then if you open that door. Anyway, uh, because it's 750. If you don't open the door, you can do this on round one. Feel free to. Anyway, kill the denizen, then jump across, then another one will grab you. Kill that. Be careful there. Now, here I like to open this door. So have a 1,000 points, and you want points in the bank for this. So blow this up and deposit points in games previous to this. I'm also blowing up the door that goes to Pack-a-Punch, which I'll show you how to do later. Anyway, I, with, I withdraw 15,000 points. Now you can do two things here. I choose not to buy Juggernaut at this point, but you can do it right now. And what you want to do is uh, go take your turbine, this thing, upstairs to where Juggernaut is, ab right above this basically. I'm checking here for those, those little stairs again. Anyway, uh, you can go put your turbine in front of Juggernaut to keep it on and buy it and then have that on and keep that going until you get to the power because I'm actually going to the power right now I just didn't see any need to buy Juggernaut but I do recommend that actually just because I, I, I think this is the only game I, I didn't do that uh, but grab that and it'll, you'll have Juggernaut even if your turbine goes out it'll just be dimmed out and you'll still have Juggernaut technically then you'll build the power and you'll get it back just because the machine turns on so this is how to build the power it's pretty simple just grab all the pieces in here and uh, turn it on with the zombie in the power room with you because he will die if he's out out there in the Tesla coils and whatnot. Now, right now what I'm doing is running toward the farm. Uh, I should be going to grab Jug. Ac I might be, honestly. Uh, there is a pathway from the farm to the town, if you were unaware of that, which is pretty nice. It goes from, you know, complete opposite ends of the map to each other, so that's that's a nice way to get to certain places. I think I actually might go into the farm real quick because I, I am checking for the thing to get me up to the Galvin Knuckles and we have double tap there. I choose to get double tap just because I like how it works with the ray gun. I actually don't end up using the ray gun in this game. This was ga this game was just used as a tutorial and oh yep we did use the pathway to the town to buy Juggernaut and we're all set up basically already. Here I'm using the teleporters and I get lucky and get to the diner. I forget, and this is the last place you want to check for the, the little piece, and we ended up having it in the last place I looked, of course, right? So go up, grab your Galvin Uncle, 6,000 points, but very useful. And uh, at this point, you're just going to want to be racing through the rounds. I mean, I like going fast uh, through, through the first few rounds just because I don't like to waste a lot of time because as it gets more tedious as you go on, you'll want some stamina basically and not have wasted it all in the first few rounds. Now you can go and pack a punch if you have enough points in the bank. I did have enough points but I figured I'd just build up a bunch of points as if you didn't have a ton of points in the bank just because I recommend having at least 10,000 to get started with what I did there. Anyway it could be because if you if you don't have that many you can always just skip out on double tap and just get juggernaut and the galva knuckles Anyway, here's dealing with Avogadro with the Galva Knuckles, really simple. EMPs are, will also suffice if you get those out of the box. I, I usually, basically if I get the EMPs first, I'll keep them. If I get the monkeys first, I'll keep those. Now, what we're doing here, grabbing another turbine, you want a fresh one. So, if you do have one just that, that's kind of used, just uh, pull it out and uh, throw a grenade at it and you'll kill it and then grab a new one. Now, what I'm doing here is using the teleporters because I don't feel like running all the way to the power plant. And that's what you do. You, you run out in the fog, you'll hear a scream, run toward the lamp, and they will jump in and make a teleporter for you. I do end up getting really lucky. It teleports me right next to the power plant. Now, here, what you're going to want to do is, well, keep those guys off you. Get Let the zombie catch up to you. 
and you'll want to leave one runner. I obviously it's on level uh, nine here, so if you're on level uh, level three or below, it's he's gonna he's not gonna necessarily run at you. He won't because none of them run this fast at that point. But anyway, keep him far enough away so you can set the turbine up and not have him destroy it. So you know right there and then he'll follow you this way so that's kind of a nifty way to do that anyway really quickly make your way back to the town and you're gonna go into the bank vault again which is where Pack-a-Punch is and you'll wanna build it so like I, you know, like I said this is an entire tutorial basically how to get set up for the strategy and I will g be getting to the strategy so I, and I'll leave a link as well although if you've watched this far you're probably gonna watch it that far anyway anyway uh, you know momentarily I will have the uh, where I where I like to train and get to the high round. Anyway, deposited a bunch of points there into the bank, just keeping keeping my amount up. Anyway, you're gonna want to build the pack a punch. You're gonna need a table part, a battery, and then the main part that looks like the pack a punch. It's pretty simple to build, only three parts. Now, you know this, you can just keep watching the pack a punch part. But I'm gonna talk about something that you might need for later, which is the jet gun. And I've made a tutorial on how to make that. And the reason you would want that is because it is it doesn't rely on ammo basically because it all it has to do is cool down. Here's some more footage of Avogadro, by the way. But all it does is cool down, so it's technically infinite ammo. And the reason you're gonna want that is because in rounds 40, 45, and up, you're gonna have ammo troubles with the ray gun and Mustang and Sally because there's so many waves. The zombies take quite a bit longer to kill with so many shots. And you're going to want a weapon that can kill them, you know, the entire time you're playing. So the jet gun's a really good way to do that. It's kind of dangerous, so you've got to get used to how to use it. But that's, about, I mean, that's, it's a great way to get to high rounds. I've used it. The highest I've gone on this is 40. And, of course, my fucking DivX crashed on 40. So I didn't, that's, I was going to use that gameplay as the uh, footage for this video to talk about. But... You know, it's really easy to get set up and do this again. Uh, what you're going to find, oh, here's, this is going to be some footage of dealing with Avogadro if you've got zombies spawning that you can't kill really easily. I mean, it's two hits with the Galva Knuckles on 14, but nonetheless, kind of a pain in the ass because it's not a one hit kill, right? So he's kind of over there dicking around, and I just train the zombies up. You'll, you'll see quite a few different train strategies in this video just because training is about ad libbing for this. This is the area I recommend. Another area that w is would also suffice is in front of the farm, just out in the part where the bus stops. But I don't like that one because when the bus does stop, he's right in your way. So the diner, at least, makes it a little bit easier. So anyway, just punch him. Be careful of the zombies. Don't get trapped into any corners or anything. And he's gone. So, you know, pretty simple. Like I said, if you have EMP, that would be really easy to deal with. Okay, so we're on round 14. Now here gets to... You know what you're going to do a million times now. Train them up, shoot them with Mustang and Sally or the ray gun. And then as you run out of ammo, use the jet gun. So basically, the reason that this video has spent so much time on setup is because that's going to be the most time-consuming part. Once you're set up, you're pretty much set for the rest of the game. Uh, when the bus comes, he's going to you know drive right through your training area. So have your zombies trained up when he leaves. Then just pat, then just run straight toward the diner before he drives and runs you over, and he'll blow up most of your spawn, which is nice. And that's about it. I mean, like I said, you've got to be, you've got to train, and just be careful with the zombies. Uh, another thing that is important to note is that the first two use, I mean, you really only need Juggernaut and Quick Revive, so the others are at your discretion. And that's about it. I mean, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Oh, yes, important to note, if you do go down, I don't recommend immediately going to get your Quick Revive and Juggernaut. What I recommend is finishing the round, just be careful, be very careful, and uh, so finish the round, keep one or two guys, or three, whatever you'd like, and then go and get your first, because it's kind of dangerous to do mid-round with a ton of zombies spawning in front of you and behind you and whatnot, and it's just a little bit more safe to do. Uh, when there's only a couple guys to deal with. So anyway, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the strategy. I hopefully, I hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Uh, feel free to uh, comment on it and let me know any changes you would make or like to make. And uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Have a nice day.